Good morning. They asked me to speak uh, uh, this time on Diamond Animals, which is a uh, very large subject. It's not an especially um, new subject. I'm sorry, my voice is a little shocked from too much talking, too much uh, screaming over loud music in bars and so forth. Um, well, so let's start at the beginning. What is ayahuasca? People use this word a lot. Uh, I don't call it that anymore. And uh, it's usually better used in the plural, ayahuasca or the ayahuasca, because everyone fixates on one particular recipe, which is um, the one that is used in the the Brazilian churches, and the one that is commonly used in outside of the traditional context by neo shamans or white shamans, and that is of course the mixture of, of, of the, the um, stem or stem bar of the liana banisteriopsis kaapi with leaves that contain uh, tryptamines of normally psychotria viridis. Um, outside of the Amazonian context, other sources of these alkaloids are used. Um, and the so-called ayahuasca effect is the combination of um, two different classes of tryptamine alkaloids, the first being monoamine oxidase inhibiting beta carbon, a particular degree hardening, which come from the, the uh, all parts of the plant banisteriopsis Um And the second being tryptamines, um, sometimes not active orally, in, as in the case of dimethyl tryptamine, um, and these come in the traditional context from leaves of uh, psychotria, which are in the coffee family. Outside of the Amazon, uh, the ayahuasca analogs consist of other uh, combinations of other sources of these two alcohols. And so you come to find out if you study the, um, the literature, uh, which I have done all along, uh, but I was writing a book called Pharmacotheon in uh, 1991 and 1993. And I said to myself, well, the chapter on, um, on beta carbons, because it's organized, uh, or ayahuasca type alkaloids, organized on a count basis, um, the beta, beta carbon chapter is in danger of it blowing itself up into another book, which it eventually did, because six months later, I, I reorganized the, those data and published a separate book called Ayahuasca Animals, uh, which is still available in German and in Spanish, but unfortunately, um, not available in longer in English. Um, and in Spanish, there's an updated and revised second edition, uh, which is now being sold. Um, and so you find that these alkaloids, on the one hand, beta carbons, which come from the stem of the liana banisteriopsis, and tryptamines, especially dimethyl tryptamine, or DMT, uh, are very common in the plant world. You find a, a roughly 70 plants in either category. And um, the best sources are not the plants that are used tr traditionally to make these brews in the Amazon. Um, people outside of the Amazon use the seeds of Pagan or uh, which is uh, uh, a plant as different as can be ecologically from uh, Banisteriopsis compatida. It's rather from arid zones, and it's a small shrub, not a liana. And it's the seed that is used and not the um, stem or the stem bark. Um, I should mention that I said all parts of the Banisteriopsis plant are active and contain alkaloids. And indeed, in the case of um, ayahuasca or Banisteriopsis carapi, the highest concentration of alkaloids by far is found in the leaves. And the traditional names for the plant seem to refer to the leaves, not to the stem. And so its use uh, as stems in these potions um, is probably recent and um, it's not, uh, from a chemical point of view, the most rational. Um, and so the Pagan Harmel seeds contain somewhat like 10 times more beta carbons than you will find in, in uh, the stems of Banisteriopsis, and at least five times more than you will find in any part of Banisteriopsis. So uh, in this case, you can make an analog of this combination. And I'll just explain briefly because I don't wish to talk about biochemistry or pharmacology uh, particularly. Um, but uh, I mentioned that dimethyltryptamine is not active orally. Uh, it's not active orally up to a gram uh, dose. And since a gram costs about 250 uh, euros, uh, no one wants to experiment with more. But eventually, if you take enough grams of dimethyltryptamine, it will be active orally. 
because there's an enzyme that's very common all through our system, but in this case, what's important is what's in our liver and in our digestive system, called MAO, monoamine oxidase. And this serves to strip nitrogen off of, uh, of neuroactive compounds uh, that are ingested in the diet. And so if you ingest dimethyltryptamine, or it could be psilocin from the psilocybin mushrooms, 4-hydroxy dimethyltryptamine, um, it, that will in some way metabolize it and break it down. It will strip the nitrogen off and make it no longer psychoactive. In the case of DMT, people have taken up to one gram orally, a single dose, and nothing happens. That's about 40 doses uh, if it's used properly by sniffing it into the nose or by vaporizing it and inhaling the vapor, you will get about 40 trips out of a gram. But uh, uh, in this case, the, nothing is felt. And so the, the ayahuasca effect, or what's really interesting about this um, indigenous discovery from um, probably the Northwest Amazon, is that um, they were able to discover a particular combination that exerted a kind of biochemical or pharmacological synergy. Um, by that I mean um, the harmony, which is the principal alkaloid of the Vanistriopsis stem, is also a substrate for this enzyme, MAO, and so it effectively blocks it such that small doses, roughly in the same range, but as its activity by sniffing into the nose or, or inhaling the vapor of the base, can be absorbed in the stomach, can get into the brain, and can exert a psychoactive effect or a trip. And so um, I studied the literature, and there's not much, and there usually isn't. Um, there's a lot of theories about this, but they're generally based on very, very thin um, data uh, in terms of hard chemistry, or, uh, and even thinner still in terms of pharmacology, especially in human beings. And so you will see that what is a roughly an average dose um, of ayahuasca, which can vary from about this much to the whole glass full, uh, would contain somewhat like 150 milligrams of beta carbons expressed as harmony, and about 30 milligrams of DMT, and very lesser amounts of related compounds. And I don't wish to be understood as saying it, it's uh, entirely explained in a simplified way, but to simplify, uh, when we talk about harming and DMT uh, as being the quote-unquote active principles. And so, um, my, what I wish to test with this, and the only way to test it is by psychonautic biomass, that is by human self-experimentation, which is the only ethical way to proceed, and animal experimentation is not ethical in this case, and won't give you the answer that you see. And so um, I wish to ascertain whether these doses of these two alkaloids exerted this type of um, biochemical synergy. And that was proposed already um, in uh, the end of the 1960s by um, Boo Homestead and jean Eric Lindgren from Sweden. Uh, and they were not talking about ayahuasca, they were talking about snuffs, about um, other uh, substances, which I'll mention briefly later that are only sniffed into the nose, and they're plant powders, in one case from seeds, and in another case from uh, the resin of a root, of a, a tree bark, the stem bark, but it's the resin, not the bark itself, which contain other classes of tryptamines. On the one hand, bufotamine, or 5-hydroxy-DMT, and on the other hand, 5-methoxy-DMT. Um, DMT itself doesn't figure uh, prominently in the pharmacology of these um, shamanic preparations apart from this ayahuasca brew. Um, and so, I did a series of self-experiments and I did find it took about 12 experiments. I isolated the pure compounds and uh, by weighing the doses and trying it systematically, it took me 12 times to ascertain and then I did another two dozen or so experiments and then compared those with several colleagues who had done like experiments. But we found that indeed, uh, somewhat between above 120 milligrams of harmony, or the beta carbonate monoamine oxidase inhibiting alkaloid of anastereosis, would indeed block this enzyme sufficiently such that 25 or 30 milligrams of DMT coming from a leaf that is cooked in the pot with the ayahuasca stems would become psychoactive. 